Welcome to Valley Viewpoint. My name is Daniel Biggs, and today my guest is Don Frost. Uh, Don, thanks for being here. Daniel, thanks for having me. So, um, Don, you've traveled over here to College Place, Washington, uh, to give kind of a special message. Uh, I was watching a video online the other day that uh, Heal Their Land, your ministry group has uh, put together. And the message was that Nashville could possibly have some impending crisis coming up. And this information has just been revealed uh, recently. So um, would you tell us a little bit about this message and how it came to be? Sure. Uh, first of all, I'll tell you a little bit about the, the ministry Heal Their Land mm -hmm. uh, that I'm a part of, but uh, Heal Their Land is, a, uh, is a, a ministry that involves many ministries of Seventh-day Adventists, of lay people, pastors uh, that are coming together on giving uh, the main points of our faith, sharing the third angel's message uh, in a non-controversial way. I know uh, it's hard to imagine that uh, it won't be controversial to everybody, but we're trying to we're trying to share this message, come together on important things, and there's an important message that needs to be delivered uh, to Nashville, Tennessee. Um, when you, it, all these uh, places to reach are important. Every city all over the world is important to uh, receive the everlasting gospel. But the thing about Nashville, Tennessee is that it is slated to be, um, uh, whether you want to call it destroyed, a portion of it destroyed, we don't exactly know, but a judgment is going to be coming on, uh, on Nashville, Tennessee. And so, uh, like when you go to an emergency room, you have a triage. You know, somebody might have a broken arm, somebody might be having a heart attack. You take the heart attack victim first. That's the most important. And so since we have this message, uh, as you were um, referring to, the re recently released, uh, un un previously released Ellen White um, materials, uh, they were released in July of 2015. Uh, many of us were very excited about this because there are uh, uh, quotes and prophecies that she had made in the past, um, but what these new release writings do is they help us put put the rest of the dots together, and that's where this comes about in Nashville. There are these other quotes that I can share uh, if I could. Um, there's a quote here um, from, a, a, it's called, this is in a place called Oakwood, uh, chapter five, and so um, this is a very uh, similar quote that I had seen in Mrs. White's writings before, and this is what she says. There was a scene presented to me. It was the night before Sabbath. That is when the scene was presented. I looked out the window, and there was an immense ball of fire that had come from heaven, and it fell where they were casting buildings with pillars. Especially the pillars were presented to me, and it seemed as if a ball came right to the building and crushed it. They saw that it was branching out, branching out, enlarging, and they began to cry and mourn and mourn and wring their hands. And I thought that our people stood by there saying, well, it is just what we've been expecting. It is just what we have been talking about. It is just what we have been talking about. You knew it, said the people. You knew it and never told us about it. I thought there was such an agony in their face, such an agony in their appearance. And so many years ago, you know, 20, 30 years ago, I had read statements like this that about this immense ball of fire that comes down on this city and there's a building with pillars. And so over the years, I was thinking about different places like Washington, D.C. and other p cities that have these buildings with lots of pillars and stuff. Uh, but finally, what happens is uh, July 2015 comes along and these unpublished uh, manuscripts uh, become uh, publicly available and uh, not just myself but others uh, were combing through these manuscripts and we discover that the city and so if I can uh, give mm -hmm. a quote um, this is from uh, letters and manuscripts uh, uh, MS 154 1904 August 14 1904 and this is what she says 
when I was at Nashville, a scene opened before me. A great ball of fire seemed to fall from heaven, and from it went forth flashes of light. When the flashes of light would strike a building, the building would burn like tinder. And then I heard someone say, You knew that this was coming. They are the judgments of God that I knew were coming. You knew, said another, you were my neighbor. Why did you not tell me that these things were coming? Why did you not warn others? So, in that particular quote, she is in Nashville. Yes. And she, she says, I was in Nashville. Yes. And she's having a vision given to her. But we're still not specific on a place. Well, that's where the next quote comes in. This is from uh, um, MS 188, 1905, January 21. And this is the new release. This is from the new release, previously unpublished. Okay. And uh, this is a sermon at Mountain View, California. And this is what she says. MS 188, 1905. When I was at Nashville, I was speaking to the people and in the night season, there was an immense ball of fire that came right from heaven and settled in Nashville. So there you have it. That's where it comes. There were flames going out like arrows from that ball. Houses were being consumed. Houses were tottering and falling. Some of our people were standing there. And I'm interpreting that standing by there because in other places she says they're near there. It was just as we expected, they said. We expected this, and others were wringing their hands in agony and crying unto God for mercy. You knew it, they said. You knew that this was coming and never said a word to warn us. They seemed as though they would almost tear them to pieces to think that they had never told or give them any warning at all. Wow. So this message really couldn't have gone out until now. It couldn't have gone out until now. And what's very fascinating about this, and like I said, we're not the only ones doing this. There are other ministries that have uh, put together uh, presentations, uh, and booklets uh, that have spoke on this subject. And um, one of the things that we have in common is that we're sharing this message about this event that's going to transpire in Nashville. But what's very, very striking about this, this vision is that when it actually happens, it happens seemingly shortly after people start talking about it because in another one of the quotes, and there are very many quotes about this, they, the people say, it's just what we have expected, but we didn't know it was going to happen so soon. And so that's very startling when you think about this because we're just receiving this uh, information just in the last couple years. and. It's when we start talking about it, oh, it's just what we've been talking about, but we didn't realize it would be so soon that it would happen. Let's talk about some details of that. Let, first off, briefly, can you describe what she means when she says night season? Well, many times uh, Ellen White, when she would have her uh, dreams or visions, it would be at night, and she would uh, sometimes get up in the middle of the night in her home. She would have a writing desk, and she would wake up, and she would write these things down as soon as that she would get them, and, and many times it would happen in the night season or at nighttime. So there are some clues in these writings, and it talks about... Um, pillars and it's the vision is redirecting her to these pillars because there's something specific about those pillars yes and and this is where it becomes really interesting um, you know in this quote in, in the quote um, a place called Oakwood in this particular uh, vision that she's having the angel says um, and, and let, me, let me read this. I looked out my window, and there was an immense ball of fire that had come from heaven. It fell where they were, where they were casting buildings, plural, with pillars. Especially the pillars were presented to me. And so she's talking about there's a place where they were casting buildings with pillars, plural. Then she goes on to say, and it seemed as if the ball came right to the building singular and crushed it. 
Now this is very interesting because normally when you're making a building with pillars, and you can make pillars out of different things, wood, uh, concrete, and uh, if you go with the traditional methodology from ancient times, you're going to make them out of stone or marble, mm -hmm. okay? And so in modern times, the uh, casting of, of pillars would involve making a mold and pouring, you know, pouring a material in it to, to make this uh, pillar. Uh, and so in this vision right here, uh, we know that the city is going to be Nashville, and we know that there is a place where they were casting uh, buildings with pillars. Now here's the interesting thing. Uh, in Nashville, at the, at the end of the 1800s, they had an exposition in, in Nashville, Tennessee, and they were trying to copy the great Columbia exhibition that happened in 1893 in Chicago. Uh, and what, what they did was they built a series of buildings, and these buildings were designed to be temporary. Uh, and they were going to be torn down after the exhibition. And, um, and so they built them out of plaster and wood, and they cast these pillars. And what they did was uh, they went and used uh, original castings that were made of the Parthenon in Greece, and they used them to build these molds so that they could cast these pillars. But the buildings weren't designed to last for a long period of time. And so the, wind, the, the water and the weather deteriorated the buildings, and the buildings eventually had to be torn down. But in the place of where those buildings were plural, they built another building singular. But they built it the same way in, in that they cast the mm. pillars, but they were made of it a different material. And we'll talk uh, more about this uh, material here. Um, and, and it's really just a, a amazing that a technique came about of putting a veneer on concrete to soften the look and make it more like, uh, like marble, which was what the original building or buildings in, in Greece look like. And they built this building. It's a, a scale replica of the Parthenon in Athens. And they literally cast the pillars. Uh, of this singular building at a place where buildings had been built before, plural. And so... Uh, it's matching this it, writing it, to a T. It's matching this writing to a T. Well, um, Don, we're, we'll come back and, and retouch this, but if you're watching this program, we do have um, some information coming up about the ministry Don is uh, part of, and it's HealTheirLand.org, and we'll get you more information on that right now. Welcome back to the second half of this Valley Viewpoint with Don Frost, and we're talking about a judgment that has been seen in vision to affect Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, Don, um, let's go ahead and continue. We had uh, read some quotes from the Spirit of Prophecy about this judgment, and just recently we've been revealed where precisely this judgment will be taking place, and this is new information. Yes, and, and we're, we're, we're centering the focus on a building uh, there in Nashville. Uh, and in fact, it could be arguably said it's the most famous or popular uh, building in all of Nashville, this uh, Parthenon, the, this uh, scale model of the Parthenon from Athens. And uh, there's a whole story uh, that people can go online, they can research uh, the, the Parthenon in, in Nashville and read the whole story behind why it was built and why it's there. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole reason why. But, but we've identified that this is the building based on uh, dissecting these uh, terms and words that are being used in the prophecy. Because this ball of fire comes down uh, where they were past tense, casting uh, uh, pillars or making buildings with pillars, and then when the ball of fire comes down, it comes down on a building singular. Right. And so w there's no other place that we know of where they cast these buildings with pillars and then destroyed them all and then built a 
building with cast pillars singular except this Parthenon where this, where this uh, building is. And so um, this identifies not only that it's going to be uh, Nashville, Tennessee, but it actually identifies where, the, where this ball of fire is going to come right down on. And of course, what we're doing is um, we're identifying that this ball of fire is an asteroid or a meteor because in uh, the technical terms in science today, uh, uh, meteors or asteroids that come uh, through the a uh, Earth's atmosphere and turn into meteors, uh, they're referred to as balls of fire because uh, they, 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 they start to burn from the friction of the atmosphere. So this appears uh, from the writings that this is what this is, an asteroid or a meteor that's going to come down and, and hit uh, this building. And what's interesting uh, is that the the football team there in, in Nashville, their logo, even though it doesn't have anything to do with an asteroid or a comet or anything, the name of the team, they're called the Tennessee Titans, and their logo on their f football helmet is this burning asteroid. Right. Uh, on the, it's very, very bizarre. I've seen that, and it is bizarre. It's what are the chances? You know, maybe some people might think, um, this is a strange message, maybe a conspiracy theory or, or you know, um, but I feel between you and I, we feel that this is a, a message from God mm -hmm. and that we need to warn the people. Yes. And that it will happen. I think you and I can say without a doubt, these things will happen because we have trust in the Word of God. Amen. You know, um, when you go back to the early history of Adventism, uh, there was a, an Adventist uh, speaker, uh, and his name was um, Josiah Litch. And in 1838, he was, uh, and this story is found in uh, the book Great Controversy, uh, in 1838, Josiah Litch had put together an, uh, a, a paper uh, that was released on his understanding of Revelation chapter 9. And he uh, predicted an event that would happen in August of 1840. Now, he wasn't predicting it. The Bible was explaining the prediction. Mm -hmm. And so he published uh, this article explaining in detail an event that would happen uh, uh, in August of 1840. The fall of the Ottoman Empire. Yes, yes, the fall of Ottoman supremacy. And when and Ellen White says the 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 prediction the event exactly fulfilled the prediction and so uh, she says that it gave great impetus to the Advent movement mm -hmm. and so uh, uh, and the Advent movement grew very rapidly from 1840 to 44 and so what we're talking about here is that God has given the church this amazing gift uh, through Ellen White the gift of prophecy uh, to tell us. Uh, beforehand, you know, the uh, Amos chapter 3 says, God does nothing unless he f re first reveals it unto his servants, the prophets. And in mercy, God has revealed to us uh, that this event is going to occur so that out of love, and, and this is really a love story, we want to go to the people of Nashville because we love them and we want to give them a warning because, you know, God places a hedge of protection uh, uh, upon his people. And uh, like, like the story of, um, of Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, it wasn't that God wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He doesn't want to do those things. The people place themselves where they, they walk out from underneath this um, um, umbrella of protection mm -hmm. and they're going to get wet. Well, in this particular scenario, uh, the, the city has evident, evidently gone to uh, some uh, measure uh, outside his protection where he allows, uh, uh, you know, Satan to come in and bring these things. And so uh, we are in love wanting to go to the city of Nashville and give the warning that this is going to happen so that, that people would either come out of Nashville or maybe something would happen like what happened with Jonah. You know, Jonah goes and he gets this warning that Nineveh is going to be overthrown, right? right? And he goes and cries out against the city and fully expects that it's going to be destroyed. Uh, but the people repent and, 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 
And Nineveh was eventually destroyed because, you know, once the thing goes out the Lord's mouth, it'll be accomplished. But the Lord was able to give a longer probationary period uh, uh, for the, for the city, city of Nineveh. And, you know, in the judgment, um, there's going to be people, I believe, that repented uh, there from the message of Jonah in heaven. Do you have any biblical support of why we should give this message? You know, uh, there's a quote right here uh, that I have, and I, I'd like to just uh, preface it by saying this. Um, it's just as important for us to warn the city of Nashville and other cities as it is for the people in Nashville to hear this message. And let me explain this. This is from Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 8. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that the wicked man shall, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Verse 9, Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So the Bible is telling us that if we don't go and give this warning message, whether the people listen or not, th it's, it's for us. Because if we don't do this, if we don't warn Nashville as a people, we've been given this, uh, you know, uh, we're told that those that have been, to, to whom those have been given much, much is required. So we have been given these truths and this event that's going to happen on Nashville and, and I want to make an appeal to everybody that hears this. If we don't warn Nashville and something happens, and I believe it will, uh, their blood will be on our hands if we don't give the warning. And in these prophecies that Ellen White has over and over, obviously not everybody in Nashville is warned because the people uh, that see these events happening outside Nashville are saying, why didn't you tell us? Why didn't you give this warning? And so we don't want to hear those words. We want to do everything that we can to warn the people of Nashville. You're making a documentary. We are. Can you tell us a little bit about that? We're making a documentary, um, and it's, called, it's going to be called Nineveh to Nashville. Nineveh to Nashville. And what we're going to do is we're going to show, we're going to illustrate uh, the great love that God has for warning a people that are gone out of the way uh, representing Nineveh and, and show that, that the story of Nashville that we're talking about here at the end of the world is a real Nineveh type story and that God's people need to go and warn that city and so uh, it's going to be uh, uh, I believe an amazing documentary we've got uh, several uh, talented people that are helping with this project and, uh, and we want to specifically make this documentary uh, to appeal to the people in Nashville uh, in, a, in, a, in a way that um, is probably very much out of the normal of order of ways that we reach people. Uh, but we don't want to wait till the documentary is finished. It's going to be some months out. Uh, and so a grassroots movement is underway in the Tennessee region uh, from people from all over Tennessee and even other states to congregate I in the Nashville area to go out and give the warning message. Well, I think this is a very serious um, topic. And after I read or after I watched your video, the, the, I was convicted that I wanted to do something about it. And the only thing I could do at that moment was post something on Facebook. And interestingly enough, I used Josiah Litch's prediction of the uh, fall of the Ottoman Empire as an example mm -hmm. um, of trust in prophecy. So, Don, tell us a little bit about how somebody might be able to contact you for more information or, or maybe some upcoming things that you're working on. Sure. Uh, well, you can go to HealTheirLand.org and uh, you can look at some of the projects that we're working on. Um, these things are happening very quickly, so we haven't had a time to update uh, the website as we need to, but keep uh, looking in the, in, the, in the near future for updates, healtheirland.org, 
and we'll also have information for people that live in the uh, Tennessee region where they can uh, participate in this grassroots uh, effort to hand out both literature and, uh, and, and eventually uh, put out these uh, videos. Don, thank you so much for your uh, commitment to studying the Bible and studying the spirit of prophecy and, and being willing to share this message. Thank you for having me, Daniel. You're welcome. And thank you for watching Valley Viewpoint, and we pray that you will tell somebody about this message, share this message, so that we may show our love to the people in Nashville. Thank you for watching.